Is it a quilt? Or is it a pillow? It's both, it's called a quillo. This is an easy and very beginner friendly quilting project that is so handy. Kids love it, it's great for a picnic blanket, an emergency blanket or pillow that like folds up and contains itself in your car. So many ways to use this. So let me show you first how it works. I'm using the Crayola Crayon Colors of Kindness fabric from Riley Blake Designs. I chose the crayons for one side and the orange, orange pattern for the other side. Just love it. I did put the pocket on the crayon side, but if I was to do it again, I would put this pocket on the orange side because I feel like the crayon side, if it's for kids, which crayons usually are, is usually going to be the side that they play on and lay on. So unless they really want to like stick their feet in there for some reason, it might be better to have the pocket on the other side, but it still looks great. It blends right in. So it's not a fail. I'm just telling you that because for my next one, I will do it a little bit differently. So let me show you how to fold it and then I will show you how to make it. Okay, let's get started. So you're going to take the side that has the pocket and you're going to put it down on your floor, workspace, bed, wherever you're going to fold it up. Now, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fold it about a third of the way in and it just folds very nicely because it'll catch at the edge of that pocket. Then you're going to take the other side and you're going to fold that in as well. So now we have it folded in thirds and you can teach kids to do this. I made one of these for my son when he was little and he loved it and he was so proud that he could put it all together by himself. Now the pocket is down here, so we're going to start at the other end and we're going to fold and fold until we're right up against the tip of that pocket. And then we're gonna fold it one more time. So now we have the pocket on this side, the quilt's all folded on this side. Now we're just gonna turn it inside out. And this is why it's super important to reinforce these corners, especially if you're gonna let kids do this themselves because those corners are gonna have some wear and tear. But I show you how to do that in the video, don't you worry. And the first time you do it, you're gonna be like, Tara, I don't think this works. But I promise you it does and you'll get better at it. So you start to push it in and then what I like to do is just kind of pull that pocket out just like you're flipping any kind of sewing project. Get my hand in there and push out those corners so that that space is really open and we're not trying to open it as we shove the folded up quilt in there. Okay so my quilt's about here right now, pillow's there and then you're just going to get the rest of the quilt put in there and you're just gonna arrange it so that it is nice and flat. And now you have a pillow. It's all just going to be straight quilting. You'll need some threads if you wanna do your threads to match. And I'm gonna show you how and when to change all that as we get into the project. So let's get started. Definitely wanna pre-wash your fabric because you're gonna be putting them in and out of the wash. So that's really important. Here's what we're going to need to make the quillow. I have cut two pieces of fabric. I got a yard and a half of the orange and two yards of the crayons. So this is cut to 41 inches wide by 53 inches long, pretty much as long as I could make it after pre-washing the fabric. Then I did the same size in batting. Now to talk about batting, it's important as you buy batting to pay attention to how far apart you can do your quilting for your batting. And usually the cheaper the batting, the closer together your lines need to be, because if you don't quilt it enough, the batting will fall apart. So I've seen batting that has to be sewn every three to four inches all the way up to 10 inches. So take that into account when you're deciding how you're going to be quilting any quilted project. And also make sure as you're storing scrap pieces that you somehow label your batting so you know what you need to do so that it stays in shape. Then I have done 15 inch squares from the two sides that will be the pocket and also the batting. So I'm gonna put the quilt part aside for now and we're going to prepare our pocket and you're gonna prepare the quilt the same way, but at least this I can get onto the camera. So we're gonna put the fabrics right sides together, get those evened up, make sure those edges are all lined up. And then we're going to put the batting right on top. So we're making a little sandwich so that when we turn it right side out, the right sides of the fabric will be out and this batting will be sandwiched in the middle. And then you're just going to pin or clip all the way around and we're gonna take it to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew around the square, which will become the pillow pocket with a quarter inch seam, 
leaving space open to turn it, so four or five inches, and I'm gonna double back and forth just to make sure we can get that turned without pulling any stitches. As I quilt the pillow pocket, I'm going to be using a navy blue top thread and a green bobbin so that the lines of the quilting aren't going to be super obvious. You can do colors that match your fabric or you can do alternate, totally up to you. This is what I've chosen to, to do on this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to sew across the very top edge a quarter inch from the edge. Now you can see, you can't see that top stitch on the front really or the back because I coordinated that. Next, we're going to be doing some quilting. And you can have fun with it, you can do zigzags, you can do whatever you want, but I am just going to do some quick diagonal lines and I'm going to use my secret weapon, which is painter's tape. I have it in a few different widths and I'm going to use two inch. And what's beautiful about this is it's not going to leave a residue on your fabric and you can just keep picking it up and moving it. I wanna make sure the diagonal line is diagonal from corner to corner which it wasn't quite. So I'm going to make the piece as big as the corners and I'm going to put the tape down so that the corner is right in the middle. So basically at that one inch. Now I'm just going to sew on either side of this tape and then I'm gonna move the tape and I will have even two inch lines, easy peasy. You can draw lines on there, but I have found this is so quick and easy and I'm all about that. Let's just get this quillow done. And if you have one, I recommend a walking foot when you're doing any kind of quilting because it is a little bit thick with the two pieces of fabric and the batting in the middle. And that will help it not bunch up because it, it helps move the bottom and the top fabric at the same time. And I would also use a little bit of a longer stitch. I usually quilt with a 2.9 or 3.0 length stitch. Now I'm just gonna line the tape up on the edge of the last stitch mark. Press that down and now I'm ready to sew exactly two inches away from my original stitching. As you get closer to the top, your tape is going to be much, much longer than you need it to be. So you do need to make sure it doesn't stick to your sewing machine as you're getting to move, as you're beginning to move forward or it could mess up the evenness of your stitches. So I usually just keep a little bit here the longer end back here where I can control it a little bit more and then just keep going. And while two inches is right there, I'm not gonna sew that because we're already gonna be going, to, going to be going around that corner. So it is really not needed. I'm gonna flip it around and do the other side. Now we have the quilt pocket sewn together and quilted. This is what will be on the outside when it is all folded up. And this is what will be matching the main quilts when it is sewn together. So this is basically the same thing, the same process that we're going to do with the larger quilt. We're going to layer the three layers, then we're going to sew them together, flip it right side out, press it. We're gonna sew all the way around the outside of the quilt and then we're going to quilt it. Just make sure you're quilting close enough that your batting is going to do well and not bunch up and fall apart when you put this in and out of the wash. Now I have the quilt section sewn together front to back with the batting in the middle and stitched around the edge. And I'm not going to do the painter's tape guidelines for quilting on this just because it's big and it would be quite a bit of tape to do that. So instead, I'm going to use ruler and a fabric pen. I'm gonna mark it on the orange side because pen is just going to show a lot better than on the navy. So I'm gonna take the, the longest ruler that I have so I can do the longest line at a time without having to move it. 36 inch long and four inches wide and I'm just going to go the width of the ruler. And I've decided that since the angled lines that I did on the, the pillow pocket wouldn't line up perfectly if I did diagonals on this, and because it's much easier to draw lines when you're going parallel to the edges, that I'm just going to have it go in a different direction so it looks like it was intentional and not like it just didn't quite line up. And I'm using a heat erasable pen, which I love because it shows really, really well. And then once we do our stitching, I'm just gonna iron over it and it will disappear like magic. So even when it's darker in some spots and later in others, it does not matter at all. Now I just took the easy way and started 
four inches off of an edge, but you'll notice that this isn't going to be four inches. So if you really want it to be perfectly symmetrical, you could start with a middle line and then work off the middle line to each side. But I've decided since this is a project, you know, a kid's project, they are never going to notice. And so I'm just gonna do what is a little bit easier for me. I'm gonna turn it and I'm going to do the same thing going the other direction so that our quilting on this is going to be squares. I'm gonna turn this around and start my lines from the top so that if there's a skinnier one, it's going to be at the bottom of the quillow and not at the top. And if your lines start to get a little bit fainter than you'd like, just move slower or go back and forth with your pen. I find if I move too fast, they're very faint. Now I have an orange thread in the top and a navy blue in the bobbin to match the crayon fabric. So I'm also going to wear my quilting gloves because they have the silicone grip on there and they will make my hands, it'll make it easier to mo help move the fabric and keep it straight because it will help grip that fabric and help me with my quilting process. And I am going to start by going the length of the quilt with the center line. So I'm not starting from an end. I'm gonna go the length of the quilt in the center and then I'm going to find about the center, the other direction as well. So I get a big quilted X that will help keep the fabric from shifting too much as I quilt. And the main thing to remember as you move it through is to keep it as flat as possible where you're coming from and as you're going. All right, we got the long way done. Now I'm gonna do a center line going in the opposite direction just to really anchor the fabric because we've sewn all the way around the edges. We've gone down the center lengthwise. Now we're gonna go down the center on the width. I like to hold both the bobbin thread and the top thread while I start and as I knot that thread so that one of them doesn't kind of get sucked down and create a big knot. So along the rest of these lines. And if you don't sew perfectly on the line, don't worry about it because again, you're going to iron this at the very end and that line will disappear and no one will know exactly where you drew it. We are in the home stretch. Now we have the quilt all done and quilted in both directions every four inches. We have the pillow pocket and we are going to place it with the crayon side up so that when it's open, the crayon side looks like one big piece of fabric. And then when it's folded up, this is going to be on the outside. So the top is the end that we stitched across. You'll notice these sides don't have any stitching yet. We're gonna do that next. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the center of the quilt. So you're just going to fold it in half, keep your finger on the center. I'm gonna put a clip there. So I know where the center is and then I'm gonna get that flat again. Now I'm going to fold this in half also, find the center, line that center up and clip it. I went up a teeny bit from the edge. So I didn't line up these edges of the pocket and that because it's a, going to be a bit thick if we try and do all of that together. So it's better to put it up a little bit. So if this is, if you were doing a quilt where you used regular binding, you would put it up from the binding. But for this, I'm just gonna put it up about a quarter inch. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew these three sides. And you're really going to wanna to reinforce up here. This part stays open because when we fold it, it flips and that's where everything goes in. So this needs to be nice and reinforced so that it's not going to rip. I recommend nice long pins if you have them for this because you are going through four layers of fabric and two layers of batting and sometimes a little bit more because when we sewed this together and flipped it, remember there's like four layers there too. And if your fabric is directional, you wanna make sure you're paying attention and that you are pinning this to the bottom of your quilt and not the top. So you'll notice all the crayons are pretty much going in the same direction. I'm not pinning this on the top where then the pillow ones are going to look mostly opposite of what the rest of the quilt looks like. It's really hard to see where this is. So here is the edge. So we're going to start by going back and forth and then creating a little triangle, just really small to really reinforce this because there's gonna be a lot of pressure on this top edge as you fold and unfold and as kids are going to be using this. So because we have no access to the bobbin thread at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to 
put the needle down and we're going to pull it up and then you're just going to tug and you're going to pull that bobbin thread up through the fabric. See how I did that? So just like you would pull a bobbin thread up if you didn't have anything down, you're just pulling it up through here so that we're still going to be able to hold both the top and the bottom thread when we do a knot. And that is going to reduce the gnarly knots that you sometimes get on the back of a project. I've also switched my bobbin and, and top thread colors because now the bobbin thread needs to be orange to go with the back and the navy is going to be on top. So let's get this pocket sewn on. So I go down about an inch and then I'm gonna backstitch all the way to the top again. I'm gonna lift my needle and I'm going to twist and I'm just gonna go to like three or four stitches along the top. I'm gonna backstitch again, forward one more time. One, two, three, lift my needle. We're gonna pivot and then we're going to go at an angle back to where we st started sewing and then continue down. So that's just really reinforcing that top edge and we'll do it again when we get to the other top side. If you wanna really reinforce it, you can backstitch and forward again on this part. I just remember how hard my son was on these, so I want this thing to stay together and not rip apart. And you'll notice I'm sewing not quite to the edge, so about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the pocket. And now we're to the next top, so we're going to do that reinforcement triangle. 